Nanda Devi is one of the most well known and a high mountain range and a peak in India. In fact, uh, it's the only mountain peak which is fully in India because other higher peaks like uh, Ketu and Kanchanjunga share their one face with other countries. But Nanda Devi remains in entirely in the Indian territory. So many things have happened in Nanda Devi and its surrounding sanctuary. And it has got a variety of history, climbs, problems of environment, and even a nuclear affair. Thus, Nanda Devi Jagarnot, as I call it, moves on with a variety of uh, problems, solutions, but retaining its beauty and charm. Nanda Devi is one peak which is seen uh, from almost everywhere in Kumau and Garhwal. This is the eastern view from uh, Birchegaj Dura Pass and they both look most magnificent. And Nanda Devi also has a big place in the folklore and uh, completely religion of uh, Kumau and Garhwali people. And there are songs and temples about Nanda Devi as a goddess. Nanda Devi's journey begins from Haridwar and uh, you soon pass uh, Dev Prayag where Alaknanda coming from right uh, meets Vandakini and um, Alaknanda is already has been merged with Rishi Ganga which is coming from uh, Nanda Devi sanctuary. In way, on way at Rudra Prayag there is a monument to Jim Corbett, the person who was well known for his uh, compassion towards tiger as well as killing it. We were a team from Indian Mountaineering Foundation and uh, we were sent there in 2001 to inquire the effect of the closure of Nanda Devi Sanctuary. Nanda Devi has been closed due to environment and various reasons in 1983. And in 2001, Indian Mountaineering Foundation under the government of India selected a team, which me as a leader and various <coughs> scientific persons to go to sanctuary and inquire whether what are the effect of the closure and whether it has been effective. Mm -hmm. We were to submit a report based on that the future of Nanda Devi sanctuary would have been decided. We traveled to Joshimat and uh, our luggage was unloaded while we acclimatized and everything was getting on. There were porters, about 100 of them we required. So things proceeded well and everything was unloaded and weighing gone. Now Nanda Devi Sanctuary, as you see this uh, surrounding mountains uh, and all, it has got only one exit here towards the, shown towards the north side, and that is the Rishi Gorge. Inside the sanctuary, there are five different glaciers, well illustrated by this uh, map. And all these glaciers, they get together, they're large glaciers, and all the water, comes down from this uh, little point you see in between the Rishi Gorge and that forms a fantastic gorge which was a major point and focal point of exploration for many years. The sanctuary has its north sanctuary here to the left of the peak and southern sanctuary to the right and outer sanctuary uh, which is here and in between the whole walls it cons consists of more than 800 square kilometers of area and it drains hundreds of uh, liters of water per day. And so the whole uh, Nanda Devi and sanctuary is a most important feature of natural beauty for India. The earliest uh, person to inquire about Nanda Devi was W.W. W. Graham, senior on the left. And he traveled in Kumau and uh, got some of the earliest uh, pictures. Hug Rutles, Rutledge, who was also in this area, was keen about Nanda Devi. But then he concentrated more on Panchachuli. But the person who really inquired was Dr. Tom Longstaff, who is here on the right. And uh, in 1907, he climbed up to this call, uh, which still bears his name, the Longstaff call. From here, he looks down upon the sanctuary. He did not enter it. But then finding out uh, no route to go in, go in, he came back and submitted his report. Now, based on his details and report, the energetic party of Shipton and Tillman seen behind here came with three famous Sherpas, including uh, Ang Tharke here seen on the left. And this small team of five persons with maybe few porters from Lata village 
<coughs> started inquiry into the Nanda Devi sanctuary's entrance in 1934. They reached Ramani and found the initial part of uh, gorge quite challenging and difficult. And by that time, the monsoon was about to catch up. So they deposited all their luggage well hidden from rain and people uh, in the Ramani caves and went back to Badrinath and not to be outdone. Uh, between uh, the time they returned here, they did a major exploration between Badrinath to Kedarnath route. They were made of very sterner self. Now, they came back again in uh, 34, in late in autumn, with a little revised team and better team. But then by that time, still water had not subsided. So at many points, they had to make a heroic crossing over Rishi Ganga, almost manually, putting like this, and a very great risk of life. They stayed at Ramani Kiyo, recover with Sherpas, and uh, from here, the real gorge of Nanda Devi begins. So the real difficulties were first was this slab, as uh, Shipton called it. It was a very steep wall where a route had to be found for which the ropes have to be fixed and uh, all the porters and luggage to be taken across. It was a major challenge. By the time they reached in, uh, they see Nanda Devi, there's a southern view, but they knew that now peak cannot be climbed, it's too late. So they concentrated on going to the southernmost point of the sanctuary and doing that, they cross few glaciers, crevasses, and reach the southern wall. And the wall itself contains a lot of uh, peak called Nanda Gunti, Brigathuni, Devatoli, Maiketoli. And to the right is the lowest point, Sundar Dunga Khal, as they named it. It overlooks the Sundar Dunga Valley. And standing on this Khal, they thought that the forest in the valley is down for a quick walk down. But they turned out to be very difficult. And this close-up shows that they had to go through a fantastic array of rocks and glaciers. And they barely managed to survive. And Shipton very emphatically said that no sane person should repeat this route. Up to now, it has not been followed yet. Now, in 1936, British organized the Everest expedition. And uh, Shipton on the left accepted to go there, while Tillman on the right declined to go and decided to come to Nanda Devi. So he was here with an American British team and uh, there were many climbers and this is when they entered the sanctuary by now a little known route to look at this whole pyramid of Nanda Devi which was very very impressive. As the time went by, slowly each and other members little less experienced were getting sick. So finally, it was left to Tillman and Odell, who was a very veteran from Everest of 1924, having met Mallory as the last person to shake hands with him. And uh, Tillman and Odell made a team to go up toward the Nanda Devi in the most primitive equipment, as you could see. They slowly progressed up with hemp rope and a very uh, peculiar way of carrying things. They could look down upon the Sundar Dunga Khal, uh, from a great vantage point and they had to go up two three bigger humps to uh, reach the summit which they did but <coughs> they had a great veneration for this peak and very humbly they wrote that after the first joy in victory came a feeling of sadness that mountain had succumbed the proud head of the goddess was bowed well if the later climbers had this uh, attitude Perhaps Nanda Devi would have been open till today. Shipton did not do much on 1936 and always regretted on that he missed Nanda Devi. In fact, he came down to Ramani to congratulate uh, Tillman and the team and to say that, uh, well, you had climbed my mountain, so I should be here. Now, in that book, Nanda Devi by Shipton, they gives a picture of this Divan Singh. And uh, this Divan Singh Butola was uh, alive when we met him in uh, 2001. He was old in late 90s, but had a sharp memory. And he told us about going with two Angrej Sahibs. And he was full of praise for their uh, style and completely environment preservation. In fact, he said the later expeditions they came, a few of them killed too many uh, barrels and animals. And that's why they could not climb and some people died. 
I asked him, can we do something for you? He said, what can you do? I am an old wood. Whatever oil you pour into me will not be soaked and it will go waste. And finally said, Nanda Devi has given me everything. So all I need is that when I die, I am burnt by the wood of Nanda Devi. A great, fantastic person to meet. Now in the meantime, while we are enjoying all these talks and chat into the villages, the, our preparations and packing was going on. And we decided the day when we will start. And everything seems to be in order. But as you are ready in the morning, the Dhan Singh, one of the Pradhans of uh, Lata village, came up with a demand and a poster. He said, that if you want to go into the Devi sanctuary, we use Lata at the starting point and you have to give us five rupees per person as a fee. It did not amount to a great sum, but it was a matter of principle that once we agree to him, almost every village in the area would demand that five rupees and entirely the whole thing will uh, go into flames. We had long discussions with the forest officer with us and uh, while the strike continued, we had to explain to them, hey, look, we are uh, here from government of India and I cannot officially pay you any money. It is against and I will be in trouble. And if you would like to come, please join us. Otherwise, uh, we will go back and uh, give deposit money to government of India treasury from where we had borrowed. And uh, the whole poet, I mean, porters and whole complete villages in the region will lo lose out quite a bit of money and nobody will come after that. So finally, it was agreed because I knew a lot of porters from my two earlier visits to Nanda Devi. They put pressure on the Pradhanji. And finally, we agreed to renovate or donate money to renovate uh, this temple of Nanda Devi at top of the village. Not a large sum, but uh, that seemed to be settled the issue. We started from Lata village, climbing up slowly and very steadily, about almost 4,000 plus feet to Lata Khadak. And Lata Khadak is a very vantage point to looking at the peaks, the first views of Nanda Devi's sanctuary peaks. On the left here is Bathar Toli Himal and the right is Trishul. Both the peaks of very prominent at the outer sanctuary were seen by us. Trishul, as you could see, is a very flat, long way. And after 1907, when Longstaff uh, failed to enter from Nanda Devi from Longstaff call, he turned the whole mountain and came here. And he decided to climb Trishul and made a camp at almost 18,000 feet. And in one long day push, he climbed from 18,000 to 23,000 feet, 7120 meter to summit of Trishul. We returned to camp and folded up the camp and went down another 2,000 feet. So in doing so, he had done almost 12,000 feet up and down at a height all nearing 20,000 plus to 23,000. It was a remarkable achievement and uh, made completely nonsense of our sort of people who are climbing now. Then the, he reported about Trishul and then Trishul has been now climbed as an easy peak several times, even skied down and plenty of things have happened on Trishul. But third only Himal stood proudly in the Trishul Valley and behind you see is Bathartoli South and these peaks were attempted by Germans uh, many years back and they could climb the South Peak but uh, not in the main peak remained very defiant. I organized an expedition from Mumbai uh, and of young climbers and mountaineers and we came to the area with uh, a ladies team led by Meena Agarwal climbed Trishul Peak while we are climbing Bathartoli main peaks or both the peaks. So we establish a high camp and from there we had a fantastic view of the entire range of Garwal surrounding Bathartoli with uh, Dunagiri, Purbi Dunagiri, Changabang and Kalanka. The most noteworthy point and near to us was Dunagiri mountain. Traditionally it has been taken as the mountain which is a lot of herbal properties and when uh, an Indian epic Ramayana in a war uh, Ram's brother Lakshman was injured and only herbals from this mountain can save him. So Lord Hanuman flew here and picked up this entire mountain and took it down so they could select the herbal they required. The thumb-like impression on the left-hand side of the Mount Peak is supposed to be the carrying capacity and carrying a thumb impression of Anuman. Well, that's are the legends and stories. 
but later on the mountain defied many climbs and expeditions finally it was climbed first by the swiss and later on now several difficult and high routes have been climbed on the mountain mathatoli himal while we started climbing first was the south peak which was our aim and at the same time we had started with two teams to go around and south peak was climbed quite uh, comfortably by professor rj desai our leader on the left and myself on the right with sherpa napa and in the on, on the way we had bid goodbye to your ankami sherpa one of the most well known sherpa at that time because he had climbed everest just a few years back and he was the youngest person to have climbed everest a charming personality and we shook hands with him asking him wishing him a lot of good luck to the right little did we realize that this was the last handshake of ankami for us for he went to nanda devi uh, for to bathartoli himal and they camped at foot of this snow ridge and a big storm hit us and they were trapped there big avalanche came and uh, out of six four climbers were buried and died only pasang temba hero heroically heroically rescued the uh, arun samant and brought him to the camp we dug across for next 2 3 days but only one body that of nitin patel was found a young boy of a graduate from iit and a brilliant student and a good person otherwise rest still lay buried on bathatoli himal well we continued our uh, 2001 trek <coughs> going up towards uh, the rashi pass and this was a complicated pass for there are three humps which shipton and tilman had to climb and after that he, he decided that to, this is the call to go down now just as you go down to the call there is a little gate and traditionally every 12 year there is a, what we call the nanda devi jatra the whole special worshiping procession to nanda devi and a big goat leads the procession and finally approximately through this gate when he branches off marches off and running toward nanda devi it is considered that the goddess has enough food now to last for 12 years and uh, jatra is supposed to be successful this is a very great and this whole that jat yatra nanda jat has now become very popular and famous a little ahead we found a lot of sto- stones with a uh, lot of slogans written what they call chino japto take away and uh, uh, take it with you of the sanctuary now when the villagers allowed to sanctuary to be formed their grazing grounds were taken away and uh, they had a lot of losses and they were in, uh, promised that we'll be giving you fresh grazing grounds uh, but that was allotted badrinath quite far away from here and um, nothing was done resettlement and any forest rights were not restored and this area has a tradition of a uh, environment movements for gaura devi one of the well known name now in history started the chipko movement where when the contractors came to cut trees around the village they sort of uh, embraced the trees and stood there you kill us first and then we will let you go cut the trees chipko movement was highly successful and the contractors had to go back and the environment is still protected but you are the district magistrate authority in the area instead of negotiating very quietly he decided to send a public armed constabulary psc that is the police with arms so these police were sent up to come here and evacuate these guys and throw them out of the sanctuary but the police from coming from planes could not just manage to climb 5000 feet in a day with their weapons and heavy luggage so ultimately the villagers themselves striking here came down and helped them to bring their guns and uh, everything and it became almost a friendly match they kept two days and then persuaded the villagers can look why are you getting harassed and harassing us also let's go down and we'll do something so chino jab to moment was given up and they came down but overall uh, the bitter test in the mount always remains from here we went ahead to malathuni pass it is a lovely little grassy land and a point from where you see nanda devi first time at a very good close quarters 
But from Malathuni down below is the Dibru Ghatta Alp, looking very beautiful from here, but more than 3,000 feet down. Today, trekkers are allowed to go up to Dibru Ghatta Alp, not beyond. And whenever somebody tells you now that we've been to Nanda Devi Sanctuary, quite probably they have been to Dibru Ghatta Alp for behind, after this, from 1983 onwards, everything is restricted. The Burugeta Alp, we saw quite a bit of uh, grazing have taken place. So I'm sure animals have come. And uh, we saw some remains of uh, animals also killed, maybe by local uh, other animals. We camped one day at uh, the Burugeta and we had a lot of discussions about various things because uh, we had this uh, Mr. Vinit Pangti, a forest officer with us. And uh, his experiences and variety of uh, questions about Nanda Devi was discussed but at the same time we could see on trees and there was already a good deal of environment uh, degradation which had taken place and uh, this is the sort of a behavior which had ultimately created problems and closure of the sanctuary. We had a lot of youngsters uh, coming with us and they said that we have grown up at Lata and nearby but we have not seen the sanctuary, our sanctuary he said so that's why we are coming with you to have a look and uh, by that way we'll earn some money and the whole area had good deal of education people they were graduate people but they had no employment and they in fact were looking forward to the Nanda Devi sanctuary tourism and its products to sustain which has been now abruptly closed and that is called a lot of hard burn now from the Burugheta Alp you climb up and there is a stone marker now this marker is also a picture in a French book of which came here to traverse the two peaks of Nanda Devi. Nanda Devi left main peak and the east peak have been uh, very beautifully located and there is a big long two kilometer long ridge connecting them and this ridge is nowhere less than 22,000 feet and with the gaps which you can see makes it a very difficult to traverse. It was the first time in 1951, the French expedition decided to challenge this uh, ridge. So they came, a young team and of a good climbing experience, but maybe Himalayan heights were missing from their uh, schedule, I mean, from their CV. They decided to climb the peak, two uh, mountaineers French after full preparations, climb up the main peak. And they were last seen descending from the main peak down to uh, Rich and they were never seen again, resumed lost and their bodies were never found. And even the, they climbed Nanda Devi East Peak two, three times, including the famous uh, Sherpa Tenzing, who was in a pre Everest great form, but uh, no trace of climbers. So ultimately, all they can do was a pay a tribute, leaving a memorial stone. And the Nanda Devi Traverse was left alone for many, many years now. Now we had to cross first uh, Rishi Ganga by a bridge and uh, it was a, we had to build our own bridge for forest department it destroyed the old bridge uh, to prevent any uh, intruders to go into the main sanctuary. So we had carried uh, two uh, different uh, ladders which were to be tied up here and fixed up. This became one of the most important point so walking gently on grass finally we reached the ridge and the bridge it was uh, built across a long rock which luckily fortunately had fallen there our we had sent one portion of the bridge from the other side and our friend moto member who was uh, very expert in all these things tied up these bridges and uh, they were ready to go in still with rushing waters and uh, completely very rickety bridge. It was still a little complicated affair. But then one had to go through this. So first after the bridge was ready, Harsing with his sure footedness uh, just went across slowly. And uh, at the center point when the bridge dips, it will be very careful. It took almost a day for the entire uh, party to cross in for only just one person can come in and we had more than about 100 people to make this crossing. So overall, it was a 
long thing and then immediately on the opposite side is the camp at Devdi where there were many new young birches which you could see possibly the old one hacked down somewhere and um, at this camp also we could see some degradation of uh, trees and everything where people who should not have been allowed into the sanctuary again we rested for a day for all these processes were slow and this far away view of the bridge could actually tell you how difficult and challenging it was next we crossed trishul nala because of the big boulders it was uh, fine and uh, we reached ramani again the same ramani where uh, shipton and tillman had made a camp and we could see uh, the route getting up towards the gorge from here it climbs up initially very steeply and then traverses to the edge and uh, all the porters had to carry heavy luggage and they had to follow us looking behind you see the lower part of the gorge and this ridge from malathoni pass jutting in which shipton had called it the curtain ridge so it comes out of the curtain onto the river that makes uh, impossible to walk along the river and we had to cross these two high passes on the way at a steep climb there are two rock markers put in and they were marking a good view point and from there i could see first time now trishul again but from the other direction and in a very different form now when the britishers uh, left india in 1947 on our independence it was presumed that the indians will not climb mountains because there were no great indian mountaineers available at that time and the sport of mountaineering would be over luckily there were people uh, like uh, roy greenwood here was in the center who had stayed on and he teamed up with the gurdyal singh on the right uh, to team up to organize an expedition of dune school to uh, trishul and uh, this was according to me the first indian expedition independent expedition in 1951 to climb any peak they came up again with a lot of primitive equipment slowly going up to the peak of trishul and on the summit here is roy greenwood and uh, kesar singh the most well known porter of that area standing together to celebrate their climb gurdyal singh performed a shirshasan head stand in yoga pose making a little dig in the snow and not to be outdone the pretty instructor greenwood jumped up and make another yoga pose going up with these two humble and lovely poses of yoga the indian mountaineering new age had begun gurial singh is still alive in 2020 and sturdy man is living in uh, chandigarh and more than 95 years of age now from here one can see the nanda devi and the bot is bill etkin had called it the nanda devi affair in this uh, well read book in 1960s it was a fear that chinese might conduct nuclear test in tibet particularly at lake lok nor in their area and this would go undetected for the technology for uh, satellite mapping or satellite observations had not developed fully so the americans came up with an idea to join with indians and put up nuclear rich uranium isotope on summit of nanda devi so if chinese do conduct a blast this uranium will react which was be monitored by the american and indian team and we would know or the world would know that uh, china is conducting a test and this will be a little check on the chinese so with that uh, thing in mind long leading american mountaineers who had climbed everest just uh, two years before came here and they were joined by an indian team along with it now vantage point of nanda devi is to be seen that this is the holy kailash mountain in tibet and from there you could see the twin peaks of nanda devi in the center the changabang on right and further right is kamet so the entire himalayan range is visibly very clearly seen from uh, tibet and because of the curvature of the earth they look little small also so this was the whole idea and nanda devi here situated on the left uh, would the rich uranium would react to anything which chinese does here and uh, 
that was the idea by which they came from indian side captain mohan singh kohli uh, one of the leading well known mountaineers was uh, put up in charge and he selected a good team to join up with the americans and team up and this was all supposed to be very hush hush expedition nobody should know but when you apply about 100 porters it is very difficult to keep things quiet for even in uh, 68s and 70s where we were uh, tracking there all our porters will say okay, sir don't tell anybody but this is what has happened so we also don't tell anybody it was still uh, captain kohli uh, wrote this book spies in the himalaya that book revealed all uh, aspects of this nuclear affair because uh, indian government and american government were very involved and uh, everything came out and a uh, lot of people involved in the expedition were suffering from cancer possibly this rich uranium had uh, leaked and some of them were taken to usa for treatment and all these were very curious happenings which uh, one can uh, read up the whole thing had happened that uh, this uh, casket of rich uranium quite heavy was carried slowly by porters and everyone american stayed one came away to put it on record and uh, they took it till camp 4 and uh, by that time monsoon caught up so they make a big platform tied up with ropes and uh, came down hoping that will come back like shipton and delman after the monsoon and carry this to the summit so after the rowings when they come back and to their horror at camp 4 the casket and the rich uranium containing uh, container is missing all ropes were intact platform was not too much badly broken so it was a very puzzling thing that where it could have gone the only surmise was that it has fallen down into the rishi ganga from the left and it was a very dangerous situation for this casket was to last for a few years or decades but when it at all opens up and melts it will completely pollute the rishi ganga with a uh, quite of a lot of uranium and uh, that would ultimately flow down to ganga into the up plains india's granary they several days and maybe months but tried by helicopter expeditions were sent to locate this but till today there is no uh, sign of it and later on at that time they put up another uh, rich uranium containing casket on the summit of nanda kot an easy peak uh, which was to monitor the chinese and later on it was taken down from this peak and taken home now our journey along the rishi gorge continued and the rishi gorge was becoming now more and more challenging and uh, porters also needed some help and to come up till we reached the slab the famous slab named by shipton and here we required to fix lot of ropes for members and porters to go up for it was very exposed and one fall could lead you to a very deep trouble you could see because all the rocks are inwardly sloping and they are slate and very thin rocks it can break and as this photo is illustrate the rishi ganga is down below sometimes one or two loads were dropped by the porters and it's this straight we could not retrieve it and um, everything had to be slowly taken up with few porters pulling from above and pushing from below and a member our uh, doctor saab lost his nerve so he had to be carried to a very difficult portion together to bring him up and the climax came as a very thin sledge ledge cuts across a steep rock wall and it is so narrow that if your uh, right shoulder and leg i mean, I mean uh, luggage touches the rock wall you might tumble down on this side which was a deep down to the gorge so villagers locally had named it as the vaikunt gully the pathway to heaven if you climb this successfully you reach the heaven of nanda devi and if you fall you go to the heaven anyway so one had to do this very carefully and uh, here we are following very steadily but this now from here you look down to the gorge and it looks terrific or even say terrible and we wonder how we had come through this next day we were camped at uh, dobata that is uh, at foot of nanda devi where two paths meet and uh, we are now entered the sanctuary we were uh, collected all the local stones and built a small temple dedicated to nanda devi and uh, in a way to my son lieutenant navang kapadia 
uh, who at a young age of 23 fought for Himalaya in Kashmir and in the terrorism Kashmir sacrificed his life to protect. So this was a little uh, offering I made to him. And the temple was inaugurated and consecrated by our doctor who was a well-known Brahmin in this area. And as you could see, we offered a bell for Nanda Devi. That is the thing because Nanda Devi is the goddess of wind also. So whenever there's wind comes, this bell makes sound. That's supposed to wake up Nanda Devi and to bless us. The Nanda Devi from here, we could see the North Sanctuary, which is quite remote and not much visited. There is Rishi Kutal in between the lake and I, after Shipton Tillman's early visit, a cursory visit in 1934, it was a Japanese expedition in 1975 that they came and thoroughly explored and climbed one peak. They were followed by an expedition from Nainital and uh, very few other expeditions that came in. The closer view of the peaks of Mangron, Dev Damla and Bam Sakram. Only Sakram is uh, attempted seriously and climbed. While Mangron and Dev Damla remain completely unclimbed, so is the uh, many other peaks. And towards the southern side of Nanda Devi Sanctuary, we could see an evening, a uh, lovely view of Panwali Dwar and Nanda Khat, both. But always the cake was taken by Goddess Nanda Devi, which with an evening sunset light looks terrific. And uh, as the peak is located in a way, with the first rays of sunrise, and the last rays of sunset always touches it and it makes for a fantastic photography. Now the northernmost point of the sanctuary was a peak called Changabang. You see this star rock and right side is Kalanka. And it was always thought that this would be very difficult to climb. And the local porters were not ready to believe that even this expedition has come could ever climb it. So this was in 1974 and uh, sanctuaries was just allowed selectively. So the British team came led by Sir Chris Bonington and joined with Colonel Sandhu, Balwan Sandhu of uh, India. This was a very heroic team with Doug Scott, Dougal Heston and uh, many other uh, persons involved in it. They pioneered a very lovely route by the, with a great amount of reconnaissance and uh, followed the long ridge to South Ridge. And uh, the final portion was a most challenging one to overcome. Finally, overcoming everything, they reached the summit in a gathering cloud, but had a lovely view of Nanda Devi Eastern face. Main peak on the right now and uh, Eastern peak on the left. And uh, this also peak was climbed by from this face only once or twice. Now around same time, while uh, this uh, Changamang was being climbed and another expedition from Mumbai led by me and we are six students. We followed just about three to four days behind this Changabang team. And we turned to the southern sanctuary to climb the southernmost point of the sanctuary. And uh, we first was of course greeted by a lovely great sunset on Nanda Devi and uh, followed by a great view of this west face of Nanda Devi. The stupendous rock face, almost uh, 10,000 feet plus and rising from uh, Rishi Ganga to the summit and made of solid rocks and I'm sure if Nanda Devi ever opens to all uh, climbers, this would attract many famous uh, leading solid climbers. And the same west face is seen here on the left, while on the right side, you see a ridge by which Nanda Devi has been climbed and it was named as Coxcomb Ridge by Eric Shipton and Tillman. And it is a very magnificent view, but as we camped a little ahead, we could see the whole ridge, a lovely snow ridge leading to the upper camp. And one more camp is made on the top to climb Nanda Devi, main peak. It was certainly an heroic climb in 1936. And even now also, whenever people are climbing, it's a lot of challenge and a lot of care to be taken. And on the eastern peak of Nanda Devi, on the east of uh, main peak, you see the ridge which was climbed first in 1939 by uh, two Polish climbers. And they were followed by a few other climbs, including Tenzing and French climbers to look for their comrades in uh, following from Maine. And among the Indians, uh, recently even Aninde Mukherjee, a known climber from uh, Calcutta, made an ascent. What we had in plan was to go to the right side, find a faraway peak called Dev Toli, 
six, seven, eight, eight meters, 22,000 feet plus. And we had to go through a very highly crevassed field. We made the team first uh, with uh, myself and uh, Mahesh Desai, while the other teams of Subhash Desai and Boga were to follow later. And we could always look at this lovely view of Nanda Devi as we climbed up and made higher camp. The route had to be made through this uh, absolutely minefield. And as we camped above, we could see down to Sundar Dunga Khal. And the other far away views were also most magnificent and a treat. But in the sanctuary wall, the inner sanctuary wall, you could see Dunagiri, Purvi Dunagiri, Jagamang Kalanka, and near to us, Dev Thuni. And far away, it was all led by Panchachuli Peak to the east. It was a very vast panorama and worth coming any day to this height. On 13th of June, when we reached the summit, here we are starting off and uh, crossing a few of these cornices. But all the time, an eye on Nanda Devi, which was too beautiful to resist under uh, any conditions. And another nearby to looking down, we could look at Mike Toli, uh, one of the peaks, which was again to be climbed by uh, ultimately by Gurdial Singh. And uh, we reached the summit when the crowds were gathering into the valley. It was a brief halt at the summit. Uh, we had uh, one or two pictures. And uh, no sooner the clouds were slightly down and cleared. But then the clouds in the Nanda Devi gathering was a daily occurrence. For, because of the high walls, all the moisture of the glaciers could not get out. And they will form a cloud cover uh, around 1 o'clock when the sun is at the peak. The whole cover will come and start raining and uh, there will be snowfall. We call this the daily matinee show. And uh, at summit, we waited enough time so that the matinee show and his uh, force is over before going down. And we could look down below the matinee show, uh, the Trishul Nala going out. Now, as we came in the evening, uh, this is a small sort of a representative crevasse bridge, not the exact one, which we had to cross. And we had crossed it many times. The Sherpa went ahead. And when I was on the top of it, it collapsed. And I was thrown held by two ropes from both sides hanging onto the wall. I could not be pulled out as the edges were soft. And uh, finally, Sherpa Dima Tenzing went down to get uh, more help and more equipment from below. I remained hanging those days where there were no harnesses, just we tie a rope to the waist and go. So slowly my breathing was being constricted and then uh, I was getting unconscious and hands were becoming frostbitten. And I knew it is very difficult to get an unconscious climber out of the crevice. Looking down, I looked encouraged. I was encouraged that there is soft snow and I maybe I jump, I will be able to reach it. So taking that chance, I took out a knife, touched the rope and instantly it got cut. And as I fell, but unfortunately, we know that snow, there was a little hard ice. So I landed heavily and my left hip was dislocated, which we came to know of course later. But I was in tremendous pain and immobilized. Soon Boga came down, rappelled into the crevice, gave us some food and jackets, and I was pulled out in a great painful maneuver. We stayed at the edge of the crevice, and next day they folded a tent and put me as a sledge and carried me. And as you could see, my leg would always remain now high because uh, it is uh, when dislocated leg cannot be straightened and I had to remain kind of in sitting position for next few days. Once down, it was uh, carried by only porters. And this is only one Lakshman Singh you see in the picture in center could carry me. It was also again very painful and very slow methods of going. Finally, a doctor came up, our doc, Deepak Sarkari, and applied me some plaster just as a support and help. And uh, I was carried on a stretcher when they found some wood. And uh, finally, I had to reach the base camp, which was ultimately reached. And only Buga stayed with me and others went down the sanctuary wall because the, if rains were imminent and if there was a rainfall, then the uh, sanctuary would be too difficult for others to exit. We had to wait three days waiting for the helicopter, which was already alerted. And it was a uh, time to defy psychiatrists, sort of any flap of tent moving. And I would uh, shout, helicopter has come or a stub, 
started by a porter and the porter would jump out and say helicopter has come it was a very tense thing but then finally we were relieved and this was the happiest sight that the helicopter came and uh, i was put in and i requested them to put it in a way where i could photograph the nanda devi sanctuary and it is gorge and there it was looking more frightening and uh, very troublesome and in fact i was happily sort of uh, absorbing this but then when we reached bareilly the helicopter took three rounds in air above the hospital and uh, i said what is this maneuver it's like when we bring a serious casualty we take uh, rounds like this so the emergency things are ready down below the ambulance and doctors but what is the serious thing you are the serious patient that's why we are doing this and that is the first time i realized that uh, i was in trouble then i was operated in bareilly and uh, taken in a plaster by uh, mumbai hospital and uh, was advised to remain on crutches for two years and it's a very long story of those two years and all the recovery but finally by 1975 i was uh, completely recovered and uh, was ready to go for a trek to sikkim now in the nanda devi sanctuary this major challenge of uh, traversing the mountain ridge in between always remain so it was japanese and indo japanese expedition that came uh, which was uh, well equipped thoroughly heavy weight expedition with all the luggage and lots of money power to come and do this they had uh, very seriously good climbers and they established at the base camp now the plan was also super because uh, the two climbers would start from the nanda devi east on the right and uh, climb nanda devi where they almost make a camp to the top and then come while another team will climb nanda devi main peak and from here they bifurcate to make a route for the traverse team so they don't want to carry everything and this was done with a clockwise precision the two climbers came stayed here and then they climb only they came down and uh, it became successfully but uh, one could see that uh, the climbing of nanda devi east for them was a challenging and they had to go for 3 4 days but from the summit as they look down uh, to nanda devi peak in far distance and the down below or the ridge between the two peaks was most forbidding and most challenging at 22000 feet and alone just two of them from the completion of the ridge they had to climb this face of nanda devi to the top and it was one of the most magnificently carried out expedition and one of the very successful uh, uh, way of climbing and one of the major events of nanda devi sanctuary now in uh, 1976 it was the 40 years of anniversary of the first ascent of 1936 this is the 1936 team and uh, led by t graham brown and to his left is uh, tillman and uh, this is charlie houston and on the right side you see the handsome man is h adams carter this is the team which made ultimately the first ascent of uh, nanda devi as we had seen but now they wanted to celebrate by making on the 40th anniversary an ascent and for which uh, h adams carter uh, that by that time a leading editor and mountaineer of the america led and has having grown gracefully old and with them was john ross kelly one of the very well known mountaineer and a very strong climber and they came to the sanctuary and started uh, arranging everything but the person to be noted was nanda devi her name was nanda devi which is seen behind to the right william ansol to the right was uh, part of one of this uh, nuclear expeditions and he was charmed by nanda devi peak so much so that he named her his daughter as nanda devi a uh, nice beautiful lady on a good train to climber but unfortunately on this trip uh, she was not keeping too well but one of the main focus of the expedition was to put nanda devi on summit of nanda devi and quite possibly somewhere the headlines were ready that nanda devi climbs nanda devi so father said that doctor daughter you decide whether to come or not which was pretty strange for a sick person need not be allowed to do this but uh, that's the democratic way so finally they went up and uh, slowly they went up to the higher camp and at that point uh, nanda devi took really sick and just could not walk and in the tent clutched the hands of her his father and uh, died so that was a very major loss and uh, it was whenever said that nanda devi has gone to her abode and uh, that was an end of the whole venture 
but john ross kelly and uh, one climber went up by the north face right to the summit and came back so another new route was climbed nanda devi was a very fine person and uh, very well trained and it was most unfortunately that uh, you know she could uh, not reach the summit and died because of uh, not respecting her own body a small monument has been erected in nanda devi sanctuary base camp for uh, nanda devi unsold and it remains as a major reminder of how to treat mountains with respect and this in the summer of 1934 the legendary explorer duo of rick shipton and bill tillman successfully solved the great mystery of entering the inner sanctuary of nanda devi according to hugh rutledge the success gained by shipton and tillman accompanied by their three legendary sherpas of angthake pasang and kusang is one of the greatest feat in mountaineering history and he considered this area more inaccessible than the north pole mr harish kapadia the leader of our expedition suggested that i should try to reach sundar dunga khal as this pass had not been reached by anyone after shipton and tillman in 1934 Their epic crossing of the Sundar Dunga Khal into Pindari nearly led them into close disaster when they descended a 6000 feet precipice into what they believed from over a mile above was a lush valley but turned out to be a frighteningly steep descent of ice and rock from which there was no escape and Eric Shipton later said that no sane person should repeat this route for me just the thought of following the footsteps of this legendary explorer was a good reason to attempt to reach sundar dunga khal on 14 june 2001 accompanied by two sherpas samgyal and dukput singh for darjeeling left base camp and reached the dakhni rashi glacier where we camped at 4800 meters the next day we traversed the upper slopes keeping above the glacier moraine and finally descending to cross the moraine we climbed on the right of the glacier and camped on a small snow plateau of 5000 meters june 16 was partly cloudy and we started early around 5 am first we traversed under the slopes of peak cream row which is to the east of sundar dunga khal where we had to negotiate huge crevasses The western slopes of Sundar Dunga Khal was broken and an avalanche prone area. We emerged a little above Sundar Dunga Khal on the east and descended to the khal. To our surprise, we saw a small clearing for camping on the south of the pass, as well as an old cairn possibly made in 1934. After spending half an hour, we made a quick descent and returned to our base camp the same evening. tired but satisfied it was strenuous 3 days but we had the satisfaction of spectacular views of nanda devi main east and all the other peaks including kalanka and beautiful changabang and being the first party in 67 years to reach sundar dunga khal the feeling was one of sheer joy after returning from sundar dunga khal i with samgal sherpa and a local guide kalyan singh decided to look for an alternative route to enter the inner sanctuary across the high call above our base camp into the trishul nala we started above base camp traversing across few steep gullies to reach a small nala to patal khan from where we climbed up a nala and camped at 5000 meter the panoramic views from the camp were spectacular the following day on 20th september we descended the slopes above upper bujgara nala and finally reached the call and cross over into the trishul valley the descent was steep across the gullies going south and traversing towards tridang the base camp of trishul we descended over a few grassy slopes but mostly rocky gullies we found several cairns up to the lowest point above the trishul nala The local shepherds from Lata and nearby village used to bring their flock of sheep 
and goats into the sanctuary prior to the closure of the sanctuary. We were unable to find the route on the lower slopes as last section had broken off. Kalyan Singh told us this route got damaged probably during the earthquake of 1991. We tried traversing on a small ridge the entire afternoon, trying to locate a route across the ridge which would have allowed us to descend to the Tishul Nala. However, finding no route, we had to climb back to the call and camp. Next day, we started to descend the Bujgara Nala and finally joined the traditional route through the Rashi Gorge. Our member Motu, and this was one of the major, though last activity in uh, Nanda Devi Sanctuary. And we had now by concluded various scientific experiments and recording and films and uh, completely bringing back sanctuary into the focus. Monsoon clouds were coming in and so we decided to withdraw the expedition and go back. Not before a lovely evening shot of Nanda Devi with the lights percolating in from various sources. Now one of the last days we sat at Ramni and looked at Rishi Ganga and there were many discussions among ourselves, what does one do with such beautiful valleys or beautiful peak? You can't pick them, sort of wrap them in a plastic and keep them for the future generation, so to say. And at the same time, you cannot allow everybody to come in and uh, destroy it as they may prefer. So where is the golden mean by which the sanctuary can be enjoyed as well as uh, used? Two generations have not seen the sanctuaries. And uh, we in our report, uh, long report submitted, that sanctuary should be open selectively to different areas and some selected expedition should be allowed so that there is a check on uh, various aspects of sanctuary which could be done. The report was submitted to government uh, departments and local state departments and state government as required. But as they say, in the bureaucratic terms, reports were submitted Committees were made, meetings were held, and nothing was done. Sanctuary still remains in the same way. We hope someday that Goddess will rise to the challenge and tempt people to come in there and give us more bliss. Thank you.